Hello and welcome back. In this session, we are going to learn about Azure Virtual Network. In short, we also call as VNet. Let's go back and try to understand about your on-premises network, how it looks like and how it is actually differs or how it will be in Microsoft Azure Network, uh, where we call it as a Azure Virtual Network. So if you look at uh, in the in the, your on-premises network or the traditional networks you might have some of the users and the virtual machines or maybe a, a user specific data within this boundary of your network and also you might consist of some of the servers or SQL database or some other network within this so we used to sit here uh, within this network and every traffic which is goes out of this will go from the firewall so that's very similar to this like uh, it goes from the user data to here and then uh, this we used to call as a user data and we also talked about the server infrastructure which might have a different DMZ zones or maybe a different subnets all altogether you have and you used to isolate the network communication between the user network as well as the server infrastructure and the uh, all the traffic used to go with your firewall to either internet or to your on-premises network. So let's have a look on very similar infrastructure what you have with the VNet. So VNet uh, is a symbol. If you if you look at your virtual network, this is a symbol. So within this uh, scope of uh, line, you have a virtual network. So where you have defined a specific address space. Uh, so this is the address space you create created and within this you can have a multiple subnets let's say if you see here uh, when you create the vnet uh, for the address space of 10.1 dot zero zero that means uh, within this network you see here this address spaces or the subnets always can consist of 10.1 and uh, opposed to that zero zero uh, which is uh, from where you can extend so if you see here uh, within this this a specific subnet you have 10.1.1 so all these resources will have anything starts from 10.1.1. maybe 11 or maybe this has 10.1.12 or this might have 10.1.200 and when it comes to this service or these virtual machines you might have a 10.1.2 that maybe 15 or 20 30 or something like that you can define your addresses so uh, technically speaking whatever we have seen here is we talked about the address space we talked about the subnets uh, and also we talked about different resources within the vnet now let's try to understand what is virtual network so Azure VNet or virtual network is a fundamental building block, right, for your private network within Microsoft Azure Cloud. And VNet will enable many types of Azure resources. If you see here, different type of resources like you have virtual machines, or you have maybe SQL servers or web applications. All these resources can be communicated with each other. Uh, and uh, if you see here within this uh, within this subnet only it can communicate by default that's isolation we're gonna learn in, in the next slide uh, but for now it can uh, if you and if you want to understand what exactly the virtual network within the Azure specific we need so these resources can communicate and also it can get the internet if the rules are allowed and it can communicate with each other and also you can extend this entire vnet uh, and these subnets also to communicate with your own premises network that's your traditional networks so when you compare uh, with the similarity between the traditional network uh, you don't operate in your own data center that's the only difference so but when you look at the vnet you can actually add the benefits of Azure infrastructure such as the scaling, availability, isolation, all that you're going to get as a benefit for your virtual networks, which we are going to talk on this. So the first thing is uh, just to understand about the address space that we try to explain here. So address space is uh, you have to, you must have to specify an address uh, space when you are trying to create a VNet. So that's your custom private IP address space using uh, 
a public uh, public and private RFC 1918 addresses so Azure assigns a resources within the VNet a private IP address from the address space uh, that you assign so for example if you deploy a virtual machine within this VNet uh, it will give the address of for example here this 10.1.0016 and then the VM will assign an IP address maybe here uh, with the 10.1.1 uh, dot instead of the 0 it can be starts maybe with a 10 or maybe 15 or something like that so the first three would goes like you know 0 to uh, 3 that's that will be reserved actually so you can't get it so the starting IP would be anywhere from 4 and this can be 5 this can be 6 and that's uh, that's about the address space now let's understand about the subnets so as we talked within this vnet you can have multiple subnets so subnets uh, basically it will enable you to go for the segment of the your virtual network into one or more subnets and allocate a portion of your virtual network uh, at the space to each subnet so you can deploy as your resources within that specific subnet just like a traditional network subnets allows you to segment your vnet address space into your segments that are appropriate for your organization internal network and if you're looking for the securing part of your subnet your subnets can be secured with your NSG so that's again additional component that needs to be tied up so within your NSG all the traffic so NSG standard for network security groups so once we complete this VNet creation we are going to talk about uh, called NSG or network security groups so we're going to talk on that so where the how the communication should go out what kind of traffic can only allowed outside or maybe inside all that rules very similar to the firewall we can create for uh, we can create some of the rules and that can be assigned for you uh, your subnets so subnets will be part of your NSGs. So that's what we're going to talk about it in a minute or so or maybe in the next lecture that would be better maybe. Let's have a look on best practices when we try to create virtual networks. So when you're trying to create any of the virtual network that's nothing but your address space so make sure that you shouldn't overlap with other network ranges. That's a basic thing right. So if you try to create similar uh, address space maybe on your on premises or maybe on your another network it will definitely overlap and uh, it creates or it, it makes some of the mess right so make sure you your entire vnet address space does not overlap with your organization's other network ranges that's a main um, key point for the best practices and coming back to the other point your subnet should not cover the entire address space of vnet uh, that's a plan ahead of the reserve some of the address spaces for further maybe a future scope so so that that makes more sense that when you introduce more resources you can have some of the address spaces already available and it also recommend when you have a fewer large vnet than the multiple small vnets that's a key and you can secure your vnets by associating the nsgs to the subnets uh, so that you are controlling all the out and inflow of the traffic so that's that's a basic four different points for the best practices for the virtual networks now let's have a look on it how the communication would happen in the internet so all resources within the vnet can communicate outbound from here to outside of the internet by default enabled so you don't have to configure anything but you can communicate inbound to uh, to a resource by assigning a public IP address or a public load balancer you can do all that configurations here you can place some of the pub, uh, load balancer and then only the traffic should go out or if a specific server needs a public IP so you assign for your traditional way like a load balancer and that IP will have a public IP that will always interface the uh, internet and whatever the traffic is coming you can have your application gateways will forward or maybe your load balance will forward the traffic with to the direct resources so that's how you can uh, communicate and here the important point would be 
your virtual networks will have by default internet enabled if you don't want configure your nsgs to block it or you can limit the network traffic and come or maybe you can introduce uh, nsgs or maybe firewalls network firewalls to control the traffic now let's understand about the communication between within the Azure resources. So you can uh, deploy your virtual machines as we talked and uh, different type of uh, VNets or application services if you see here or maybe even the Kubernetes services and virtual machine scale set and uh, all that can be communicated within your VNet. And if you are uh, thinking about the virtual network service endpoints, you can extend your virtual network private address space and identity of your virtual network to Azure service resources, such as the storage account or maybe a SQL database. And over a direct connection service endpoints allows you to uh, securely communicate a critical Azure resources to only the required networks and also you can do by default this uh, VNet to another VNet you don't have a communication so that means you if you want to enable a VNet to VNet communication let's say you have here one VNet with the 10 series maybe here you might have with 192 series by default the resources does not communicate but if at all you want to you know, allow them to communicate you can go for the VNet peering option and also uh, you can make your virtual networks to communicate with your on-premises resources by enabling point to site virtual machine uh, and also you can go for the site to site VPN or you can go for the Azure Express route or uh, which will establish your network from your on-premises network to Azure cloud through a Express route partner so this connection is completely private so the traffic doesn't go over the internet so there will be a dedicated line will be pulled from your isp to your azure uh, services as well as to the your on-premises network so uh, there will be a dedicated line so the entire communication will go within that pipe is completely private network so it will not be allowed the public networks whereas with the site to site VPN or maybe point to site it will be over the internet that means uh, the traffic will go over the uh, public network uh, with the encryption tunnel so maybe you can go for a uh, point to point or maybe different uh, uh, VPN protocols will be used to encrypt the traffic and coming back to the filters that's nothing but your network traffic to be filtered as we talked here as of now like NSG can be assigned here so that the network traffic will go over the network security groups where uh, the application uh, specific only rules will be allowed like inbound outbound traffic and also you can configure your application security groups also uh, within your NSGs you can configure even network virtual appliances uh, from the third-party appliances also from the Azure marketplace so so that you can secure like sofas or maybe checkpoint uh, different appliances uh, to configure your virtual and network appliances and coming back to the routing yes uh, within the VNFs you can configure even virtual uh, routes or the route table can be configured even uh, broad gateway protocol that's a BGP routes also you can configure uh, if you connect your virtual network to your on-premises network using your VPN gateway or maybe express route as we talked earlier uh, you can go and you can configure your route uh, routing information also so these are the just the interaction uh, what I'm trying to explain about the all the words that are involved here maybe the last one would be the pricing if you want to learn the pricing is completely free uh, you can create as many as VNet of course there's a limit limit limitations so you can check just the VNet limit page uh, and you can even increase that certain uh, network limits um, if, if you request Microsoft they would be uh, extending those uh, limits by default and uh, as we talked the pricing is completely free so the how the pricing works is basically on the resources that you configured so if these resources the outbound or the inbound traffic uh, based on it will be calculated so basically creating vnets is a free for you but the traffic will be charged so that's how it's gonna uh, charged 
So let's uh, go back and check some of the other points like we talked about the isolation and also you can go for private um, network access for the resources. You can integrate your network with other networks. That's what we talked. And also we talked about uh, VNets, subnets uh, and also the address space and you can have your own NSG. That's what we try to explain here. So within this NSG of uh, the basically these two subnets can be associated here so the traffic will go from this nsg nsg is very similar to your firewall and if you want to create uh, you can create the vnet with uh, powershell or maybe azure cli and also azure portal so these are the options that you have so let's jump into the demonstration of how to create from azure portal and then we also try to create from the powershell